Hello everyone, this is Stephanie. Welcome to another video. So today we're going to work on this herringbone bracelet with inclusions. So what is that? That's where you have done your herringbone, you do your herringbone, and while you're stitching, you add some beads in between your herringbone stitches, and it comes out so pretty. You can really see it on the green one a little more, but it's very subtle here. Absolutely love adding beads to my herringbone stitch. It's really not hard to do. Um, I'm going to walk you through it step by step if you're a beginner. And if you watched my last video on creating a bead stash and you stopped at the first stage, you can do this. You have all the beads to do this. And the button. So we closed it with a button. Easy closure. So really easy to do. If you are more advanced and you want to do this in smaller beads, you just have to go down a size in all your beads and it will all fit beautifully. All right, so let's launch right into a materials list. So here I have it right here. Very uh, few materials. You'll need one or two Eidos. Of course, on this one I did the two, and this one I did all in one color. So, you know, two colors or one color, a three millimeter fire polish bead, 11 O seed bead. I have a stop bead. I'm using a button to close. It's a very simple closure, size 10 beading needle. You can use wildfire fire or or Fireline for this. Fireline makes a more supple bracelet. It really moves a lot. Wildfire, it's a little more stiff, but it will soften over time. So whichever works better. The Wildfire is probably better for, better for a beginner because it holds the beads a little bit more, but either one will work, whichever you have. If you are doing, if you want to do it in 11 O's, you're going to use these two in 11 O's. Go for a two millimeter fire polish and a 15 O seed bead. You can make it wider because of course, if you're using 11 O's, it's gonna be more narrow. So you can add more herringbone stitches on in the beginning when we do our, you know, the base row. Um, so you can, you know, adjust this to make it um, using with 11 O's. All right, so I'm gonna clear this off and we'll get started. Please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my videos and ring the bell. That way you'll get notified when I upload a video. Thanks a lot. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, let's get started. So thread your needle with about, I don't know, five and a half, six feet of thread. You'll have to add thread. Put on a stop bead and leave about a 12 inch tail. We're gonna use that tail to do this little graduated end here. So we're gonna start our, our herringbone with ladder stitch, which is a pretty standard way of starting herringbone. You can do without it, but for this bracelet, because I like this little ending here, I want to, I'm gonna use ladder stitch. All right, so I'll put that aside. Let me pull in. So pick up and drop down to your stop bead four of your 80 seed beads and I'm doing this the two color one so I'm going to start with my outside color work on my inside and then do the outside all right if you of course just use all one color if you don't want to do the two color so I've dropped my four down and I'm going to sew up the first two right after my stop bead right here that's what it looks like I'm going to have to back off just a touch. Okay. So exiting here, just going to sew down through these two on the end. Like that. I'm going to pick up two of my white beads. Exiting here, I'm going to sew through the two blue ones on the end. And then up the two white ones. up to white, exiting here, I'm going to sew through the other side of the beads I'm exiting, and then down here, these two. Again, two white beads, exiting here, just sew through the other side of the beads I'm exiting, and then up. And I sometimes I pull the the thread here just to that's coming out of the beads just to tighten things up. Hold it with my thumb like that. Pick up two of my white beads, exiting here. I'm gonna sew up through the two. I'm gonna pull and then down through these two. Going back to my blue, picking up two blue, exiting here, so through the two white beads, up the two blue, pulling my thread, 
what it looks like. Two blue, exiting here, sewing up through these two. Need a pull, and then down these two. Okay, so this is what I have right now. So just get to that point and then come on back and we'll continue. Let's continue. So we're exiting this bottom blue bead here. I'm going to pick up two 11 OC beads. I'm just going to decorate the edge because I want to go through this bead. So I don't want any thread showing. So just put a couple of 11 O's there. You could do three, but I kind of like just the two. Simple. That's what it looks like. Now we're going to pick up two of my of the blue beads. I'm going to make a herringbone stitch. We're just going to sew through the first stitch the first bead after that one. So here, exiting here, sewing through this one. And then we're going to go up through this one, the white one. Pick up two white beads, sew through this one, the next white one. Pop those into place and then up through this white one. And that's herringbone if you haven't done it before. Easy, huh? Two white beads through this one. Put those into place and up the blue one. Two blue beads. I'm going to sew through the end blue bead. It's that one. those into place just like that. All right so for, to continue I'm going to take my piece and I'm just going to flip it over like that. So I've just gone from this side just easier to bead this way to this side. <laughs> okay so just like that I'm exiting this blue bead. I'm going to pick up two 11 O's and I'm going to sew through this one. That puts me in place to put my beads, more beads on. And if you notice, I have two gold here, but none here. Don't worry about that. That always happens. We'll play with that later. And, you know, so don't worry about not having any of the gold beads here. All right, so here now I'm exiting the top here so I can put more beads on. So just get to this point and then we'll continue. Okay, we're back. So let's add some more beads on. So two blue. I'm going to sew through the next blue bead. Like that. So now we're going to add a, an 11 0 in between. So here normally we'd be going up through this bead to put more beads on. Before we do that, we're just going to pick up an 11 0 and pop right, pop it in there. So just pick up 11 0 and sew through the white bead. And don't worry about it, it's going to push things out a little bit, and you want that. It's It will all sit nicely as we go on. Two white beads. Do this one. those into place. 11 -0. through this one. Let it pop in. Press it down with your fingers so you make space for those beads. Two white beads. Down this one. Like that. Pick up the gold. 11 -0. through this one. Make sure that you're pushing them aside a little bit so that everybody fits. Two of my blue beads. Oops. Down this one. So that's our end bead. Make sure those pop into place. That's what it looks like. Flipping it over to this side. So my thread's on this side now. Just easier to sew that way. Okay, we're going to continue. Two of my 11 O's. I'm going to decorate the end. So exiting here. So through this one. You can put three there, but I just kind of like two. It's up to you. Two of my blue. Down the blue. Put 
just pop into place. Now I'm picking up my inclusion. So here is my 11O. So I can do this one. Two white beads. And this one. So then the white bead. Make those sit nicely. 11O. Up this one. Look pretty already. Two of my white beads through this one. Make those sit nicely. Up through this one. So we added a gold bead and then up the blue one. Two of my blue ones down this one. So that's our end again. That's what it looks like. Turning it over so I can add more beads. Now, so this is what you're going to do. And you want to make sure they all sit nicely. So here we go. This is what you're going to do. For You can do the, your entire bracelet this way. Or you can... We can, you can go along with me. So here, if you do your entire bracelet that way, this is what it looks like. It's beautiful, just that way. But we're gonna add more um, beads on. So if you want, let's say, I'm gonna give you some measurements for this bracelet so you can get an idea of you know where to put things. So my bracelet is seven inches with the clasp. The amount of beading before I do the brick stitch ends, like from here to here, is five and a half inches. The, I, I have done 20 herringbone stitches before I start to increase again. So you see how, how I have all these inclusions here, right? And then at one point I start going, I get, I add more. So I have two here and then I get, then we increase again with the fire polish bead. So I did 20 herringbone stitches and the way you count those, you're just counting the end bead, one, two, three, four and such. And so I had 20 until I started my to increase again, which gives us this sort of bump in the middle. Um, so if you want to use that as kind of a guide, if you're doing a seven inch bracelet with the clasp, you know, you sort of play with it, and, you know, so you, it, so you get the size right. Um, as far as sizing, all that is is practice. You have to just keep putting on your wrist, practice, look at it, where is it sitting? Um, that's just a matter of um, time before you get that. Usually you make them too big, too small for the longest time. So just be very, very aware of your sizing. Keep putting it on your wrist so it's not too big or not too small. All right, so just keep doing this. You, like I said, you can do the whole thing just this way, or you can do the first 20 stitches and then we'll start, we'll increase again. All right, so have fun, and I'll see you back here when we start increasing again. Okay, we're back. So let's say I'm, I'm going to make a mini. So let's say I have all 21 or 20 um, stitches on. So now we're going to increase again. We're going so we're going to go from adding one 11 0 to adding two. So let's we're starting at the end. I'm going to put on my two blue beads to make herringbone stitch. Now I'm going to pick up two of my 11 O's. I'm going to pop those in. And they're going to push everything out just like the first one did. Two white beads. Then two of my 11 O's. So we're, we're making more space so that we can fit that fire polish bead in when we get to it. Do the white beads. Then two 11 O's up through this one. Two blues down through this one. Making sure everybody's sitting nicely. And I'm, I'm kind of pulling it out a little bit, you know, just to make sure the space is there. Turn her over. Two 11 O's, two blue, you got it, two 11 O's, like that, 
And don't worry if they're not perfectly on top of each other. They're kind of supposed to slant a little bit. You know, you're trying to fit, you know, um, beads in a space that is, you know, it's it's not meant to fit the beads. So you want it to, you want to make sure that you're, you know, you're sort of pulling it out a little bit and making space for them. Two eleven O's. Two of my white beads. Two eleven O's. Up the last group. Two of my blue beads. At the end. Turn her over. Two eleven O's. Up through this one. So now I have on two sets of the two eleven O's. Do one more row that way and then come back and we'll continue. Okay, we're back. So now we're gonna add the fire polish beads. So we're gonna add these guys right here. So here I'm exiting the blue. I'm gonna put on two blue. Like that. Now I'm gonna pick up a three millimeter fire polish. And I'm gonna just pop that into place. How easy is that? And isn't that fun? You can play with any kind of beads here. You just want to make sure you're putting them in gradually as they get larger. Do white. Fire polish. Too white. I don't know if you heard my stomach growling. I'm sorry if you did. And a fire polish through the blue one. Isn't that pretty? I like that. Two blue. There you go. Right here, we'll do it like that. Flipping over. <laughs> Two eleven O's. I'm running out of thread, but maybe we'll get the next. And get one more row on. Make sure you're nice and tight. So two blue. Now I'm going to go back to my two eleven O's. So in between each fire polish, I'm putting two eleven O's like that. I mean, it's just something I decided to do. You can play with anything here. What about a bicone? What about a rondelle? So two eleven O's. Two white. There we go. Two eleven O's. Two blue. That's what it looks like. Turn it over. I'm gonna have to add some thread in a minute. And the two um, gold eleven O's on the side. So if you notice here, see how we've increased here till we got to this guy. So then we put the two 11 O's on. Now what I did on this is, actually let me get the, the green one, which seems to have taken off on me. Here we go. Okay. So you'll see it more clearly on this one. So I put on the, so here I, I so I didn't, work up to the three on this, but let's say we're here. We've put this uh, fire polish on, two beads, a fire polish, two be two eleven O's, a fire polish. So I'm, I'm um, alternating each row. Here I put five fire polish on, on this one. I like this better. I put seven on. It's hard to see them. Just see, You just see sparkle on this one. Um, I think you'll see it more on the blue one, but they start here. And then I have a fire polish to 11 O's, a fire polish to 11 O's, fire polish to 11 O's, fire polish to 11 O's, fire po polish to 11 O's, fire polish and to 11 O's. Whoops, fire polish. So I ended up with seven fire polish beads with the two 11 O's in between. And then after that, we're going to add, so after your last fire polish is, is on, you're going to add the three rows of two 
11 o's. So you match this side and then you're going to go from that to one until you finish your bracelet. Okay, so I, I'll just do the, the seven rows of fire polish and then we'll come back and I'll get you started on this part. I mean, if you feel com confident just going ahead and doing it, go ahead and do it. But I'll come back and, you know, just, and, you know, get you started on that. All right, have fun seeing you. We're back for a second. So just a little heads up in case I wasn't clear. We're going to have seven fire polish beads with the two 11 O's in between them, but there are three rows of seven. So you'll have seven in this row, seven in this row, and seven in this row. I know you knew that, but I, you know, I just, I, I'm, I just wasn't sure if I was clear. So here I'm at the row where I'm going to add the 11 O's in between. So just alternating like that, say, and then I'll just keep alternating until I'm done with my oh, having all seven in a row on in each area right here. And then we'll continue. Now, if you need to add thread, and you probably do, might have to at this point, um, I'm going to link my adding thread video in the description box below the video because it's just the best way to add thread. And, you know, I think you'll, I think you'll like it. All right, so I'll see you when I'm done with my fire polish. Okay, we're back. So I have all seven of my fire polish on right here. And if they kind of fall through, you can pop them up through the back and, you know, kind of straighten it out a little bit. I haven't sewn my threads in yet. It might be a good idea to sew them in soon so it doesn't get loose. Um, but I will also sew mine in like on the next break. So now we're going to go back to doing three rows with just the two 11 O's on. So here, I'll just get you started. So turned around and I'm putting on my first two beads and then we're just going to do two 11 O's. And that's all we're going to do all the way down. Like so. Two eleven O's. Like that. Last two blue. Make sure they sit right. Turn it over. Two on the side. Coming up through the blue. Two blue. Down the blue. And now we're just going to go back to the two 11 O's here again, like that. I'm going to do that th three times all together to match this side right here. So one, two, three, one, two, and do a third one. And then you can go on and just do, after you get the three groups of 11 O's on, then just go down to one 11 O in between each herringbone stitch and do your 20. I'll just let you do that and do your 20 or however many um, herringbone stitches to get to the other to get the other side to look like this side. All right, so get that done and come on back. And at that point, we'll be ready to put the clasp on. Actually, no, we'll, we'll be doing the brick stitch and then we'll put the clasp on. All right, see you in a few. Okay, just back for a second. So here I've done my three rows with the two 11 O's. Now this row, I'm just going to put one in. So I'll just get you started on that. Just for those of you who are more beginners. So one 11 out in between each, and that's going to pull everything together, just like that. That. Last two blue. Turn her over. Two on the side. And then you're just going to continue on with one 11 0 in between each herringbone stitch until you have this side of your bracelet done. And then come on back and we'll work on a little brick stitch end. Okay, we're back. And this is what our bracelet looks like so far. It looks weird to just laying there, but I think when you put it on, I think it's so pretty. I wish I'd made this normal size. <laughs> All right, so let's 
continue on. So we're going to do the brick stitch, but we had to prep this side. This side's ready because we have the ladder stitch here. So I have to make this side look like this side. So I'm exiting the blue bead. So now I'm just going to sew these together. So I'm going to go down these two, the two blue, and up the two white, like that. And then I'm going to go back down the two blue, and then back up the two white. So do you see how I've just sewn those two together, those two um, columns together? I'm going to keep doing that all the way down. So I'm going down two, up these two, don't get caught on your 11 O's, back down these two, back up these two. That. Do that all the way down. right there and then down these two at the end. I'll have to unstick that bead but you get the idea. You're just going to make sure that they're all sewn together so that you see you see these thread bridges at the top right here. You'll see thread all the way across. All right so get that done and come back and we'll continue. Okay we're back. So I had a little knot in my thread that was keeping my thread from pulling through so I had to mess with that a little bit. So here I'm exiting so I've gone through my last group here, so remember I went around and then through here, I'm coming out of this bottom bead. Now I just want to turn my thread around. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go exiting this blue bead here. I'm just going to sew through the next blue one right there. And then I'm going to go up through these two side beads like that. Might be an easier way to get around, but this works. And then through these two blue ones. I always like finding ways to turn around when I need to, because sometimes you find yourself in the wrong direction. It's like, what do I do? Um, so there you go. So now you are exiting where you want your your brick stitch to go. So I'm just going to turn it this way because it's easy for me to do brick stitch in this direction. So just get to this point, and then we'll start the brick okay. stitch. Okay. Very easy brick stitch. Pick up two blue beads. And if you notice, if you haven't done brick stitch before, don't panic, you can do this. We use just these threads that are holding the beads together. So do you see the, they're called thread bridges? This is a thread bridge right there. This is a thread bridge. This is a thread bridge. So we pick up two blues. We're exiting this blue. We're going to skip the first thread bridge and sew through the second one. So you're just going under the thread bridge, not through any beads. And it's going to pop those two beads on just like that. Then you're going to sew up through the second one, like that. I'll do it a couple times. See how that sits in place? Now you're going to pick up one white one, sew through the next thread bridge. See that one right there? Just going from back to front, like that, and then up through the bead that you just put on. Pull, there you go. White one through the next thread bridge, from back to front. And then right up the bead you just put on. See how that pulls in? Whoop. Love brick stitch. White one through the next thread bridge. Make sure you're just going through the thread bridge. It's like right under it. There. And then up the bead you just put on. Now we're going for a blue. Sewing through the next thread bridge and up, and then another blue through the last thread bridge, and then up, like that. That's what it looks like. Now I'm just turning it over again so I can work in this direction. Let's do another row. Two blue. Just always start out with two. Skipping the first thread bridge, sew through the second one. This way we're decreasing 
and then up the second bead. Like that. White one. Through the next thread bridge, up the bead. White one. Through the next thread bridge, up the white bead. Blue one. And don't worry, sometimes they pop up a little. Don't worry about it. Oh, sit down. Blue. Oops. Through the... Oops, sorry. <laughs> Where am I going? Through the thread bridge. Up the bead. Blue. Through the last thread bridge. And up the bead. Like that. And now you're almost there. We go to, we did, we went to one, two, three, five. So we have one more row to do. Turn row over. We'll do that last row together. Just do a little faster. Two blue. And the second thread bridge. Up the blue. One white. Through the next thread bridge. Up the white. Blue. Through the next thread bridge. Up the bead. Like so. Last blue one. Through the last thread bridge. And up the bead you just put on. So now we have five beads at the end. And that's all we want before we put our clasp on. So cute, huh? So you're going to just do that on the other end. Uh, exactly what you did. Here's your thread. It's in the right place. It's coming into that blue bead. So you're just going to repeat that. Rewind if you have to. Um, you're going to repeat that and then come back and we'll put on the clasp. Okay, we're back. So all we have to do is add on the clasp. So let me pull on a little bit. So I'm using this button and um, you can use any clasp you like. We're going to do a very simple closure. I'm just going to pick up four 80 seed beads. I'm just going to sew through one hole in my button and decorate the top, maybe an 11 0, an 8 0, and an 11 0, to go down through the other hole right there. A little pull. Pick up four 8 0's. Just going to go right down the side. Just like that. It's so simple. Um, you know, nothing super complicated. So here I'm exiting right here. So now you just want to work your way up. So I just go through the beads, you know, using the thread path I've used. So you can kind of go through here. Maybe through these two. Through. Let's see. Go through one more. I'm just trying to find a path to the other side. Up. This one. <laughs> Little crazy. Up this one and then this one. Whichever path you can find where you're sort of staying on the thread path. And that may be different for you, but you know, you just. That's part, if you're, you know, if you're just learning, that's part of learning is, okay, how can I get from one side to the other easily without creating a new thread path? So see, I'm just going back up through the beads. I'm, I'm serious. Once you learn how to do that, you know, you can, it, it, to me, it makes all the difference because that way, you know, you're using your, your whole piece you know, to get to one side to the other side. And in the process, you're really sort of reinforcing the whole thing. So I went through, went through again and then, you know, maybe work your way through again. I'm running out of thread here. I would suggest you add a thread here to put your clasp on, but I just happen to have a thread here. Um, and, you know, so then I would do it again and then I would tie my threads in. So get that done and then come back and I'll just show you how to put it back. So we have our button on. And now let's put the, on the other end, so either add a thread or if you have thread. And if you add a thread, if the clasp breaks, then you can always put another clasp on. If you're using the tail thread, you know, that I'm using, um, you're going to, if it breaks, then, you know, your whole bracelet breaks. 
So I'm just doing this because it's easy for me to do it, but just add a thread. And you know, I always have that adding thread video uh, in the description box under every video. So all I did here was add a number of beads that I know will go around my my button. And for this little button, and I'll put the size um, in the description box below the video, I used three, six, three, six, nine eightos, and I put an 11 in between just to decorate it, but you can do anything you like. Just make sure your buttons are going to go through. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side. So I'm just going to sew through some of those side beads, just like that. And to keep the video from being way too long, <laughs> I'm just going to finish it off camera. So, you know, just um, work your way around the beads, go through again, reinforce, and then come on back and we'll finish. Okay, we're back and here's what it looks like. So it's too small for me to put on and I, of course I'm not gonna sew it in because I wanna take it out, but it's so pretty. I love it. I just love just picking all these cool colors and the button is great. My loop for the button, maybe put on 10 or even 11 of the 8-0s in between the 11 O's depends on, you know, what's going to fit. So make sure your button goes through it um, easily and, you know, it will hold. So there you go. Here's your your uh, herringbone bracelet with inclusion. So cool, huh? So grab your some of your beads out of your stash. I mean, it's so fast and easy and what a great gift, right? Even, what about a man bracelet in, I mean, I think this would make a great man, any of these colors would make a great man bracelet. Or just what about, you know, black and silver for a guy bracelet and just use you know, uh, a metal clasp uh, or clasping or something like that. So, you know, lots of options here. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.